Tao San Hao, Pinky Shawaitai, Denisa Kowa, Hong Chai Mei Li, Liso Based Economy. Now that probably sounded like Chinese to you, didn't it? It did to me too, because I was making it up as I went along. But I have a point. And the point is the following. On the planet, we actually have 7 billion people. Of those 7 billion people, only around 450 million actually speak English. We've got a map here of the English-speaking countries. And so, as the majority of the material that we receive in the linguistic team comes to us originally in English, our task is to translate all that material for all those millions and billions of people who, without our translations, the videos that we share would sound like Chinese. And when you understand that, you can begin to see the vital role that the linguistic team plays within the Zeitgeist movement. Because without the translations, we are never going to be a truly global movement. Millions would never get to know about a resource-based economy, about the Venus Project, or about the Zeitgeist movement. So how do we work? Well, we work collaboratively in teams. We work transparently. All the projects that we are translating are up online. Anybody can look them up. They can follow the progress. Sometimes there's, there's moments in the process when they can join in and help translate as well. We have a unified method of work, which we have developed collaboratively over the months as the team has been, been growing. And we hold regular meetings online in TeamSpeak uh, to be able to keep up to date with the latest information, with the new tools that we might, brought in, might be brought in, the updating of, of tools to uh, a, a new level. And all this is aimed towards achieving the best possible translations that we can. Because the accuracy in the translations is equal to the credibility and the survival of the movement. If we give out poorly translated or badly presented work, this only serves to spread confusion and give us a bad image, quite frankly. So the accuracy in the translations, this is what we're always striving for, the best possible translations that we can. As time has progressed, many of the benefits of working collaborative, collaboratively have become very evident and they're worthy of note. And the best example that I can give would logically be when we did the translation of Zeitgeist moving forward. It was possibly the largest global translation effort ever done online. It came... It came shortly after receiving a tsunami of emails in response to a young gentleman that has something to do with the movement, Peter somebody or other. He sent out an email to all the 500,000 members of the movement asking for help with the translations. And we were absolutely inundated with emails. In about a fortnight's time, which is two weeks for those that don't know what a fortnight is, uh, we received over 2,000 emails from people offering to help with the translations. And just as that tsunami was finishing, in came the translators like guys moving forward. We were originally expecting some 30 Google Docs to work with, but these 30 Google Docs grew exponentially into 78 Google Docs. But unfazed, the 501 members of the 30 language teams that accepted the challenge of translating the, the film, they rolled their sleeves up and leaving all other tasks aside, <laughs> typing their fingers to the bone, and totally spaced on coffee, <laughs> we managed to meet the deadline of three weeks. We managed to get the translation, the subtitles prepared so that Peter could get them onto the videos ready for the screenings. We had to work in a different manner to the way we were used to, because we had to protect the film from early release, but we even had time to prepare a collaborative Google Doc, similar to the one I showed before, with the transcription errors that we'd seen, so that when the proofreaders came in afterwards for the transcription, the final transcription uh, proofreading, 
it was already sorted out for them. So we work collaboratively even on that level as well. The team structure, we have uh, various teams, obviously, with the, within the global linguistics team. First of all, we have the transcribers for the English language. As I say English language because most of the material comes to us in English. And these are for the videos, for the audio, such as the blog talks, for the PDFs and the texts and the websites. We have the synchronization of the timestamps on the videos. We call them the time shifters. We have the proofreaders for the transcriptions. Then we have the translators, which currently we support some 80 languages. All sorts, you wouldn't believe. We've even got Mongolian, we've got various Indian dialects, we have languages from Africa. Really, really getting big now. And then the final stage, the final team, is the proofreaders for the translations. All of these working together, obviously, towards the best possible translations we can get. So let's just briefly pass through what these different stages are. The transcription. The transcribing is a putting down in text form of what we hear, for example, from the original version of the video. Okay? And there's a very common misconception here, which I'd like to clear up now, and I think it's very, very important that uh, people understand this. A lot of people that only speak English think that they can't help us with the translation team. Oh, I don't speak another language, so I won't be any good at that. But in actual fact, your help is vital to the team because we need you to make the transcriptions, the original English subtitles or whatever. We need the English speakers to do that. If we don't have those accurate transcriptions, the jobs of the translators then become very much more complicated. They have to listen to them for themselves. It's very less time efficient if they have to do it themselves. So the transcribers are very, very, very important. If there's anybody out there that doesn't speak anything else but English and is wanting to get involved some way with the movement, believe you me, you will be welcomed with open arms on the transcription team. For the Just get in touch with me afterwards and I'll, I'll get you in touch with the transcription team. Basically, we can say that without the transcriptions, the translation team is held back. And without the translations, the whole world is held back. And if that message didn't get through, a word from our sponsors. Okay, very, very briefly, just to show you how user-friendly the tools are that we use. This is .sub. Some of you have probably heard of .sub. And it's a heck of a lot higher up than I thought it was going to be. I was going to point with my finger, but anyway. You can see on the left-hand side, you have the video with the subtitles underneath. On the right-hand side, the rectangle there, it actually says, add a transcription line. Okay, That's where the text goes in that you hear. You put in the... the the text, you adjust the timestamps. You can see the timestamps here. We adjust the timestamps. They can even go to milliseconds for greater accuracy so that they're spot on. And hit enter, it's automatically saved and it passes you on to the next time slot. And you got it's very addictive, very addictive. I've burnt many a lunch thinking, just one more box, just one more box. And um, once the transcribers have done with this stage, it then passes on to the, the time shifters, who will make sure that the synchronization is as perfect as possible, with the voice and the subtitle beginning at the same moment. And then, as some languages need slightly longer to be translated, maybe more characters, uh, more words, if it's at all possible that the English subtitle will be left on the screen milliseconds, half a second longer, whatever, it, when it's possible, so that the translation also has time to be read. Because it's no good having marvelously done translations if they pass by so fast that you haven't got time to read it and absorb the message. Once the time shifter has done their magic, uh, the transcription is then open to the proofreaders of the transcri transcriptions. And this is quite important that it's native English speakers who do this, so that they don't just check the grammar and the spelling, but they make sure that all the words have been correctly heard, because if not, this can happen. Hang on a minute. Are you there? Come on. Come on. Das hier ist mein Sektor. Das hier ist das wichtigste Gerät des Küstenwächter. Das ist das Überlebensradar. 
in blue is where the, the translations are uh, inserted. And this is a perfect example. It's in Bulgarian, uh, addendum in, in based on social pathology in Bulgarian. It's a perfect example of how some languages need that little bit extra space, therefore time to be read, to say the same as what's being said in English. Okay? It's a bit more long-winded, a lot of the other languages than English are. Uh, it's... Um, also worthy of pointing out that when we come across a difficult term, many of the terms used in this message that we're giving out now are unfamiliar to us. And so the teams collaboratively will get their heads together and decide on the best way to, to translate a certain phrase. For example, city systems has been a, quite a, a hard one for the Spanish team. And so we got together, we even got in touch with Jack and Roxanne. And then that phrase, as we decide to translate it, then, that then becomes... Uh, standardized so that every time we translate anything, it's always going to be the same word that's used. And we don't lead to confusions and so on. Once the translations have been finished, we then pass on to the proofreading phase. And this is perhaps the phase that has the most responsibility because it's not just checking the grammar and the spelling of the language that it's been translated into, but it's also making sure that the context is correctly conveyed. One mistaken translation, one word, badly translated, can change the whole meaning of a phrase and therefore the message. So we have to be very, very careful that the message is correctly conveyed, otherwise we get A being translated as B, and then on top of that the people understand it as C. So we really do have to take things very, very carefully on this level. Moving forward a little bit, we're going, working towards now, this is the hopefully in the close future, the linguistic team will have its own website dedicated pure and simply for linguistic team uh, topics. It's in the embryonic stage uh, at the moment. And uh, the idea is that eventually we will have a linguistic team theater where all the videos that we've translated will be a sort of a one-stop shopping for the videos. Any activist or anybody at all that wants to see a good translation, the best possible translation, will be able to come to this page and find them all there in all the form formats that they, they want to download or to share a link or whatever. And I'm using TED as an example because we're going to be using the same system, dashboard, I'll explain a little bit in the next slide, uh, for the linguistic team website. And there will also be a linguistic team theater for the, uh, big pardon, linguistic team library for the PDFs and the books and so on. And what happened with um, .sub was we caused so much traffic on .sub with the Zeitgeist material and the Venus Project material that it called the attention of the owners, quite logically, and they began to watch the videos. They liked them, they were in agreement with them, and they wanted to help us. So they gave us a gift, a gift that would normally be sold to companies like TED, and this enables us to do marvelous things on the back side of the you know, behind the curtains of the translation team. Uh, it will enable us to have that wonderful website theater, but also it will give us such fun toys as interactive transcripts. Now, what does that mean? You can see here we've got a Slovakian translation. This is for Mata. And uh, it's, um, it's actually quite a nice video on linguistics in babies. You can see the, the subtitle underneath the video, and on the right-hand side, you've got the... Uh, transcription, a translation, and there's a, a zone that's in darker grey. What happens here is that when the mouse is moved over that interaction, coinciding with the subtitles, it will light up in a darker grey. So if you click on it, it automatically takes you to that very point in the video. So this is a really nice tool. You'll be able to go and check on something. What was it that so-and-so said in that video? Let's go and look, and there it is, all at the touch of a button. 
These are all tools that are going to be very, very useful for us in the future. And this is what we're working towards. Um, here we have another one of the translation assist tools that we use. It's the Poodle. Those of you that have been around a while will have heard of Poodle. And it's been updated quite recently. Um, and this is what we use for the text, for the websites and so on. The videos are done in .sub and Poodle is where we do the text. Again, it's very user-friendly, introduce the text into the box, uh, underneath the original transcription, hit, hit enter, it's saved automatically and passes you on to the next uh, paragraph. All these tools make it very easy to be collaborative because as the things are automatically saved, you just close down, go away, and somebody else can come in and pick up where you left off translating. So it really is very, very simple to work this way. Poodle currently supports the 80 languages that we have in the linguistic team, in the international linguistic team. And one of the wonderful things about the linguistic team, working in international, obviously, is that it has such a global reach that we're learning a great amount about communication between these, across these artificial barriers that have been created. And the chapter projects, which is, you can see there in the title, it says chapter projects, is a great example of promoting the communication between the chapters through the linguistics team. Any of the chapters that create some interesting information and wishes to share it with the rest of the world, they can bring it into Poodle in their original language, we will translate it into English, and then into all the other languages to share with all the other chapters. And the example that we have here is the bullet points by Simon. So, uh, but it's actually done into uh, Macedonian there. So you can see we really do have a lot of different languages. So, uh, one thing that is becoming very, very clear, patently clear with the linguistics team is that it doesn't just have to be the linguistics team that works on an international level. In fact, if all the teams were international, it would help the Zeitgeist movement grow much faster. Collaborating, we avoid duplication of the work and we achieve a much higher standard as well. And um, it all comes down really to the fact that learning and sharing the experiences that we have, uh, we, will, we will cross these barriers, we will begin to uh, really feel ourselves as a truly global movement. So basically, what we could say is that we're building bridges. We're building bridges better and stronger every day between the chapters and to the world. And while some of the first bridges were very basic and some people didn't really get quite the idea of how to use a bridge, we're, much, we're moving towards a much more streamlined future where we can see and experiment for ourselves that no matter where we are in the world, these, there's much more similarities between us than differences. And as developers, more and more developers, understand the need to work international, internationally and globally and come and help the linguistic team create the tools that we need to be able to get better and better with the translations, then we will continue to beat at the heart of the Zeitgeist movement and carry on towards this streamlined future that, that we're all looking forward to. And now finally, just one last little word that I always say to the new members into the Spanish language team. We aren't translating a soap opera here. We're translating how to change the world. And that is something that is worth all the care, all the dedication, all the time, and all the love that we can give it.